Hello guys, this is Siddharth Sarako and welcome back to your own channel, Explore Electronics. First of all, thank you for your support and love. I wish you could get maximum out of me so that you could learn and understand new things. So for today, our topic is hysteresis loop. So without wasting much of yours and my time, let's begin with the topic. Before starting up with hysteresis loop, we need to go through hysteresis. Hysteresis is dependence of the state of a system on its history. For example, a magnet may have more than one possible magnetic moment in a given magnetic field, depending on how the field changed in the past. Another example is deformation of rubber bands and many other natural phenomena. Hysteresis can be found in physics, chemistry, engineering, biology and even in economics. For example, in thermostats and Schmitt triggers, it prevents unwanted frequent switching. Hysteresis can be dynamic lag between an input and output that disappears if the input is varied more slowly. And this phenomena is particularly known as rate dependent hysteresis. And the last thing that you should know about hysteresis is that the systems are non-linear. Okay, so I think that would be more than enough to come to our next topic or the main topic that is hysteresis loop. Now coming to the hysteresis loop, it is being used to study the magnetic property of a material. So point number one is that the loop shows the relationship between induced magnetic flux density that is denoted by B and the magnetizing force that is denoted by H. So the hysteresis is also known as BH loop or BH curve. So this is the boss. This is how the BH curves look like. But the question is, how is it made like this? So, point A, ferromagnetic material that has never been previously magnetized or has been truly demagnetized will follow the dashed line as H is increased. So, from here we can say that more the current is applied, stronger the magnetic field is. So, at a point A, almost all magnetic domains are aligned or we can say that magnetic saturation point is achieved. When H is reduced to zero, the curl curve will move from point A to B. After magnetic force getting zero, some amount of magnetic flux remains. This point is also said as the point of retentivity. After that, when the magnetic force is reversed, the curve moves to point C, where the flux has been reduced to zero. This is called the point of coercivity. After this, the magnetic force is increased in negative direction. The material will again become magnetically saturated but in opposite direction or say till point D. After that, reducing H to zero brings the curve to point E as shown in the graph. Increasing H back in positive direction will return B to zero. On the things which you need to notice here is that the curve did not return to origin of the graph because some force is required to remove the residual magnetism. The curve will take a different path and it will lead to point F as shown in the graph. And this is said as BH curve or hysteresis loop and this is how it works. There are number of primary magnetic properties of a material and can be determined. So we'll talk about them one by one in brief. So number one is retentivity. It is said to be a certain amount of residual magnetic field when the magnetizing force is removed after achieving saturation point. Number two is residual flux. It is the magnetic flux density that remains in a material when magnetizing force is zero. Number three is coercive force. It is the amount of magnetic field which must be applied to a magnetic material to make the magnetic flux return to zero. Number four is permeability. It is denoted by mu. It describes the ease with which the magnetic flux is established in the component. And at last, number five is reluctance. It is the opposition that a ferromagnetic material shows to the establishment of a magnetic field. So guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you have added some knowledge to your library. And if that thing helped you, then do hit the like button and share this video with all your friends. And there's a one important thing which I need to ask you all. I have got few of the requests to make the video in Hindi. If you like the concept of teaching things in Hindi also, so please let me know in the comment section. And till the next video, bye bye.